Hello again, this is Alex with MasterChestTrading.com and this is Market Recap of Friday, April 5th, 2019. Again, stocks are pushing towards fresh all-time highs. And we will see that their leadership is actually quite robust from semiconductor technology and discretionary stocks, so this is a good thing. Uh, mainland stocks from China really popped and we will look at ETF ASHR that you can trade in the United States. I'll give a trade example of McCormick and Company. This was an actual alert to my subscribers. We'll look at junk debt, which is confirming the move higher, and we'll look at the yield curve inversion, uh, and it's slightly improved, and we'll look at this bond fund. Gold and dollar is just acting inconsistently, so I'm staying out of those markets. Oil is pushing higher towards the fresh highs for the move, natural gas is doing nothing, and Litecoin went for a breakout, just a huge breakout, we'll look at it as well. Let's look at S&P 500 ETF SPY. So first of all, as I was saying, we are pushing towards fresh highs. Fresh highs are not that far off. They are like right there, basically, just a few points away. I think the breakout to fresh highs is obviously extremely bullish. Uh, we are playing it on the upside at Master Chess Trading. <clears throat> This indicators that you see on the chart, the green, the blue, the red, and the yellow lines, you can find out more about them at MasterChef's Trading. These are uh, custom programmed indicator and you can, indicators, and you can have them on your chart. Just find, click to MasterChef'sTrading.com. So you can see we had an alert sent to my subscribers here on the 5th of February. It was a very nice move with S&P 500. The same is happening to Dow Jones, a couple of alerts were sent, uh, approaching fresh highs again, so this is a bullish chart, I don't see any other way to read it, uh, when the chart is bullish we need to be buying it, that's pretty much it. QQQ, another alert was sent here on the 13th of February, it was a very nice move, approaching highs again, highs are, I mean, they're right there. <clears throat> so we will very likely hit those highs and possibly break even higher. I mean, highs are bullish, so we will just look at the chart and trade it as, as it stands now, without thinking too much about the future. We don't know what's going to happen in the future. What I know for sure right now is that we should be buying this chart. This charts, in fact. So stocks in general right now are bullish and we should be looking for buying opportunities. In my opinion, the buying opportunity, an excellent one was here in February and another one was here in March, which was just beautiful. But unfortunately, we didn't have a chance to send an alert. The move was very dramatic. But, you know, we were able to get in here on the 13th of February, so it's fine. The rally is being led by semiconductors. Here is XSD Semiconductor ETF, and this is a very uh, broadly diversified semiconductor ETF. And you can see that these are fresh all-time highs that we are seeing right now, actually today. So again, fresh highs are very bullish. Uh, we should be buying, we should be looking to buy. A couple of alerts were sent right there on the 4th of February and 8th of February to my subscribers at Master Chess Trading. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to use my indicators. You can just look where the price is and if the price is breaking above the blue line, we simply buy. That's all we need to know. Uh, same can go for more... Um, commonly traded ETF, so XSD is, is a good ETF, but it's not volume, it's not a very big volume. Uh, if you're looking for something with bigger volume, then you can look at SMH. Uh, it's also a semiconductor ETF, but with a capital <clears throat> capitalization tilt. So, okay, same thing, we are seeing uh, a breakout to fresh highs here. Again, this means that 
the semiconductor stocks, which are more volatile than uh, other indust industry stocks, are leading this charge higher. And this means that the uh, risk is uh, being evaluated by the traders and by investors as relatively low. And traders and investors are buying relatively high beta, uh, high volatility stocks. In this case, semiconductors. So I don't see any problem with this chart. The only thing, the only thing I want to see is a kind of pullback, and then we can look for buying opportunity. Here's the technology sector XLK, and we are like literally one cent away from fresh highs. So a high here was seventy-five fifty-eight. And the high here was 76, 27, so it's just a few cents away, basically. But this looks like a breakout is about to happen again. And another alert was sent here on 15th of February to my subscribers. So overall, technology sectors and uh, semiconductors are leading the charge higher. This is very bullish. Here is a XLY, cons a consumer discretionary sector, and you can see also just right there, the fresh highs are very close. Uh, we've been trading it as well, so a couple of alerts were sent, one on 31st of January, another one for uh, on 12th of February. Another beautiful opportunity was right there on the 8th of March for... <clears throat> Various reasons the alert was not sent here, but again, you could have had uh, plenty of opportunities. And again, if you have my indicators, and you can just get them on, on trading view, look for Master Chess Trading indicators, the, this is the actual indicators right there. And then you can sign up and get them. So you don't have to be a brain, you know, brainiac to just look at the chart and buy it, basically. <clears throat> Let's look at some of the foreign stocks. Here's a ASHR, and these are um, mainland Chinese shares listed on various Chinese exchanges, Shanghai, for example. So a couple of alerts. One was sent here on 5th of March, and then another very recently on the 25th of March, and this one just took off. <laughs> Sometimes those stock, you see how they gapped? And sometimes they gap in our favor, which is beautiful. So this is about 10% move. And I think it's just getting started. So if I was holding it, I would be holding it and just continue holding it until... Because I think we can easily break significantly higher from here. So it looks like Chinese stocks are doing quite well. If we look at the junk bonds picture, so junk bonds and stocks, they move together. Uh, junk bonds trade almost like stocks because they're so, junk bonds are so low grade uh, and they basically become stocks. And this is actually a good piece of knowledge to know because right there on the 30th of January when we saw a breakout above the blue line right there on junk bonds, this was just another confirmation that the uh, stock market is turning around from the December lows. And right this instant, I'm seeing a fresh high for the move for junk bonds, so I don't see any reversal brewing for S&P 500 yet. If anything, I think we could see a fresh break to fresh highs. I wanted to share a trade that we recently did and uh, master chess trading that comes so you can see the couple of alerts were sent right there on the 22nd of february and then another one right there on the 28th of february now why did i send alerts at those specific times you can see that it's, it's just visually obvious you can see a breakout above the blue line right there and to find out more about this lines go to master chess trading right there masterchesstrading.com and sign up for one of the plans that has trading indicators so these two right there then you can have the same indicators on your trading view chart 
So it's the same thing. Uh, I don't need to really overthink my trading. I, I want to make things as simple as possible because when you're trading, you really want to be concentrating on the you know many things, um, and the less you concentrate on the actual system, the better because you need to be able to control your risk, you need to be able to control your emotions and all that. Here, all we need to do is simply look at the chart. If there is a close above the blue line, then we simply buy it. And there is the breakout to get into fresh highs. Notice also this price action is very interesting. You can see that before here in the 13th, uh, 13th of December 2018, we had a really relatively deep pullback. Another alert was issued right there. Now, as if you're a subscriber, you know that I put my stop relatively far around the yellow line. And what happens is I usually move my stop to entry once my target is reached. So once the target is reached, that's it. The stop comes up from the bottom and goes to entry. So most likely, if I was to enter right there on 26th of December, I would not have been stopped out by this gap down on the 24th of January because my stop would have been further down even more at the yellow line. So I would have been just sitting and doing nothing in my position. I would be sitting here, sitting here, and then all of a sudden you can see a fresh breakout. So even if I entered right there on 26th of December, this trade would have worked in my favor anyways because during this uh, drawdown in January, in late January, I would just did nothing. But if you didn't have a position, then on 26th, 22nd of February and there on 28th of February, we had a couple of alerts and then people were just got a nice 12% gain. Easy trading, truly easy. So sign up at Master Chess Trading. So let's look now at the yield curve and the way it's been behaving. This is a yield curve as of today, uh, April 5th, 2019, right there where I'm hovering. So you can see that currently the yield curve is a little bit inverted uh, on the between the very short range of debt and about and uh, kind of like a short to intermediate rate of um, debt, you can see that the interest rate is slightly higher for the shorter end of the spectrum than for slightly longer end of the spectrum. But overall, the longer term bonds are still uh, or a longer term interest rate is still above the shorter term interest rates. So let's see what happens. What happened to this uh, from the a few days ago? From 26th of March was probably the uh, strongest inversion you can see here, uh, and you can see that the shorter term, a shorter term debt, or rather yield was significantly higher than kind of intermediate uh, yield. As we advance forward to today, you can see that the, it is not as big of a problem anymore and perhaps this will write itself even further. How would that happen? The short-term interest rates PSV is a fund that we can look at uh, to get an idea of where the short-term bonds are heading and by extension the short-term interest rates are would be the opposite, would be doing the opposite. So you can see that on the 31st of January there was a breakout right there where I'm, where I'm hovering and after that, actually this was an alert to my subscribers, after that we had a very nice move. Uh, towards the March 27 high. Now a pullback has unfolded and most likely we're not yet done with this pullback. I think we may see more trading sideways, possibly a further pullback. That's what I'm trying to say is most likely this um, inversion will right itself. So I'm not terribly worried about this 
uh, inversion yet of the yield curve. If something like this was happening, as in, for example, uh, in March 20, 2007, then I would be very worried. But right now, you know, things are just not that bad uh, with the interest rates. So the short-term bonds had a very big move, really, for the bonds. Uh, the same goes for intermediate term bonds, 7 to 10 year treasuries. You can see that they moved pretty strongly as well, but all of bonds are pulling back right now. And the TLT, the 20 plus year treasury bond fund, my favorite bond fund to trade, also moved quite strongly. In fact, we had a just a really nice alert right there on the 4th of March. It was just a huge move in our favor. I myself had a position open at uh, 121.07 here from the 11th of January. I sold about a half, uh, I sold a half of my position already, so to lock in the profits, and I moved my stop to entry. You don't have to be super profitable so long as you are profitable. So long as you don't have uh, losing too many losing trades, you can continue making profit. In this business, so long as you're making profit, you're in good shape. <laughs> so basically just make a profit. You know, take take your money, take take profits off the table, move your stop to entry so that at least you don't lose. This is the, one of the biggest things I learned about stock markets of, over my seven and a half year career is that at the very least, take some money off the table and lock in those profits. This way you will not be you know, losing money over, over the long end. Come up in a small profit, always. Always, always, always small profit. If you make a big profit, congratulations. But the, at the very least, have a small profit. So bonds, I think right this instant, are just pulling back. And I think we should be still buying this chart. And I am still buying this chart. Um, but a deeper pullback is not, uh, not out of the question, especially if stocks continue higher. It's kind of like a seesaw. Usually bonds and stocks move opposite to one another. All right, let's continue to uh, Forex and gold. And I wanted to show when in doubt, stay out. So <laughs> right now, the dollar and gold are just moving really weirdly. So you can see that dollar is in an uptrend because you can see we're close to fresh highs. And so is gold. Here's gold futures. You can see gold also is making fresh highs. Now, this shape here from 3rd of January till 20th of February, till now basically, could be thought as a head and shoulders pattern. That's why I am a little bit reluctant right now to enter too many gold trades. And I'm, I'm just kind of staying out of the gold and forex arena until I see a clear uh, pattern. Now, gold looks bullish to me right now. And like, you know, you can see that we actually sent a couple of alerts. One was sent on January 3rd and another one on 8th of March. And they were both successful trades. Um, right this instant, I want to wait a little bit and see where the dollar and gold relationship will take us. Let's continue to oil. And you can see here on this chart... Um, a breakout brewing, we're approaching breakout level, and in my opinion, the breakout levels are around 64 bucks. So I think if we manage to break out and close above it, I think we can easily continue higher here. Um, why is this happening? Don't really know, don't really care. I don't really follow the news, you know, that much. I mostly just look at the charts because charts will tell you everything you need to know. For example, as I kept saying here, in uh, starting from 15th of February, to me this was uh, a this breakout right there, 15th of February above the red line. 
to me, this was when I was, you know, back then in February, I was thinking, okay, so now that we are quote unquote overbought, I want to look for a a rollover and I want to short short oil, something like what I did here on the 31st of January. You can see I shorted oil right there on the 31st of January. My target was reached uh, on the 11th of February and on 12th of February I got stopped out. But because I sold half of my position and because I moved my stop to entry, again, see above, take your profits, especially with Forex, commodities, etc. Then I, it was a profitable trade, and then I just sat in no positions. I had no positions here. So I was waiting for a good opportunity to short oil. Here on the 25th of February, I thought we're going to close below the red line. This is my trigger, basically. I close below the red line. It did not occur. The same goes here on the 26th of February. And then finally, right there on the 8th of March, I thought we are going to close below, but we didn't. And in fact, this candlestick is a hammer candlestick. And if you read, if you read candlesticks, then you know this is a hammer candlestick. And usually they mark bottoms. And lo and behold, it did mark a bottom for this particular move. So a breakout is very much possible if we break out above uh, this blue line of resistance you can find out more about master chess trading then you we can potentially look for a, um, an opportunity to buy oil natural gas is again doing nothing i think it's a bearish security i had a couple of just very nice alerts here uh, one on the 28th of december another one on g in january 16th and since then, we're just basically doing nothing. Uh, if you have a position, then wonderful. If a short position, obviously. Uh, if you have no positions, then okay, just do nothing. Lots of, you know, doing nothing in trading. All right, now I want to look at Litecoin and cryptos in general. So Litecoin, I, I, if you listen to my previous videos, you know that this is what I was saying for a long time here in february i was kind of reluctant to sell it to short it uh, and it was a good thing because notice if i shorted it here let's say on 21st february i probably would have lost money already so this breakout was just enormous uh, you can see on the first of march or rather sorry first of april right there we were just below the blue line. Again, the lines, you can find out more about them at Master Chess Trading. Right there on the 1st of uh, April, we're just below the blue line. Now, I was hoping for something a little bit more subtle, just a small close above the blue line. <laughs> that did not occur. We just had just enormous pop. And then it went as high as, uh, you know, 59, 60% in just a couple of days. So pretty wild action. And if you trade cryptos, you know that this is just a, kind of like a normal thing. If we pull back, I would say that I would be buying at around 70 bucks, you know, depending on price action. And the good news is we have uh, a way to easily buy cryptos now through Robinhood because you can I buy cryptocurrencies through Robinhood. You cannot short them, but at least you can buy them. Bitcoin is not as uh, strong as Litecoin, but see how, again, the price is coming up to this red line. I am somewhat reluctant to short it right now, but I think if it gets up to 6,300, you know, about the blue line, we'll be interested in buying it. Ethereum is a lot weaker, but again, you can see the way the indicators are curving down makes things easier for the price to get up to the blue line. All right, so that's it for this week's recap. Uh, please head over to MasterShares Trading, click on alerts and indicators, and select one of the plans now the prices are going up so you can see that 
trading indicators were recently only 24.95 the price did go up to 29.95 but i think just a great deal is to get both the trading indicators and the alerts which are at 34.95 is a killer deal you get everything you get the price action indicators you get my you can ask me questions it's a risk-free trial there is no um charge of cancel within 30 days so lots of lots of good information lots of alerts daily alerts and weekly in-depth videos similar to what you're seeing are available so do uh, head over to MasterChef Trading and sign up for one of the plans that's it for this week's recap thanks for watching and have another great trading week bye bye